Okay, that was a lot of work for nothing because uh, I'm down to needing one remaining stone for my chimney build. And essentially it's the cap. So um, yeah, I need a piece that's 24 by 30 inches. And this, this was pretty close until I broke the edge off there. So yeah, back to the drawing board. Anyway, we can go up and have a look at the almost finished chimney uh, minus a, a, a cap for a flute cap. But anyway, have to keep looking. Yeah, it's sort of like birch bark this year. It's been a little hard to find for my canoe build. Anyway, let's go have a look at the chimney. So I've got a few uh, minor projects left to do, but the major ones are done. The cabin's up, the roof's on, and the chimney is finished except for that cap piece. And a bit frustrating because I whittled away at digging that thing out of the ground and Mother Earth wasn't going to give it up. Too handily. When I did get it out, obviously too small. Uh, well, it wasn't until I broke it. But anyway, this project's done. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to be able to fire up my fireplace for the first time. Uh, but before I do that, I attempted to, in building this cabin, to try to keep it nestled in the trees. I didn't want to take down a lot of trees for the build. Um, so I've got to do a little elevation on the tree that's uh, sort of overhanging the chimney. I need a bit better draft that. So that's, uh, that's my next project, and uh, that'll be the last one for today. And then tomorrow, uh, I'm hoping to uh, fire up that uh, chimney for the first time. My uh, entire adult life, I've been an arborist uh, as a trade. That's that's what I did for a living. So uh, yeah, I've climbed a lot of trees and got to climb one now. And I got to get kind of up there a good bit. And so we're going to leap forward from the 1700s into the into the uh, in the 21st century because uh, yeah, no sense getting old and stupid too. And I don't want to fall. So a pioneer would have gone up there and scrambled around, and I could probably do it too. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to employ some modern stuff here and we're going to get this elevated over the chimney so I can have my first fire tomorrow.
Okay, got adequate clearance for the chimney. It should draw really good. And uh, put away my 21st century tools. And now I'm going to leap them back to the 1700s. And this is how they dispose of brush. No modern brush chippers. It was drag and burn. So yeah, we'll get rid of this stuff. And one more project done. So I had uh, a very productive morning in the blacksmith shop uh, today and I, I made a number of accoutrements that I'm going to use for cooking and other things in the cabin today. Uh, first being a number of hooks, a pretty simple hook. They're drive-in, very common item in the 1700s, 1800s. Um, being frugal, you didn't have to make an extra nail, it was just one piece, it was built pretty easy. So I'm going to hang up some pots. Uh, over my windows. I also built three things for the new fireplace. Uh, oh, and speaking of fireplace, the exciting part about today is I'm going to light the first fire in it. And it's been a rainy day, uh, so we've got a low pressure over us, which means the poorest draft you can get. So if it draws today and I don't smoke myself out in here, I'm going to be really excited. Uh, anyway, before I do that, a few items that I made here. Um, this is called a trammel, and uh, basically, uh, what I've got here is my adjustment for uh, low, medium, high heat, uh, like, like you would in modern times. I also built a rotisserie. Uh, for beginner blacksmiths, this is a great project. Really simple to build, a few bends, um, drawing out the ends here and making some uh, nice little curls on it. Uh, this will be the spit part. It goes through the, through the chunk of meat you're gonna cook. And uh, one final little skewer here that you can essentially, if it works, and it does, uh, you push down into the meat. So you pull that out, you can rotate the meat, push it back in. Uh, you can rotate this away from the fire, or back towards the fire. So a simple little device uh, that was commonly used in the uh, 1700s. And the last thing I built for the fireplace is a trivet. Um, so that's for putting my griddle on and uh, doing up my, uh, bannock and bacon and such things. Anyway, I'm gonna start by driving these pegs in and get my pots hung above my uh, new countertop here.
So in order to um, capitalize on all my space in the cabin, when I put the uh, the woodworking bench in, um, because of the undulations in the logs and the way I did my trim around the bottom to seal my floor, it sort of sits out a bit. So I'm going to build basically, I guess in modern times they call it a splash guard. But I made this out of cherry that uh, this really dates me. Uh, that was cut in 1971. So just out of college, I did it, my first job working for a fellow who had a sawmill, a big old circular sawmill. So you see in the in the wood, and I decided to leave it much patina as possible. Uh, the lines of the saw, some of the teeth in the saw might be a little wider, so they'll leave those nice lines in the in the wood. So this is a piece of cherry. Um, he had a contract for cutting railroad ties, and uh, whenever I saw a piece of wood go through that I really liked, I'd, I'd set it off the side of the mill and I'd have them deduct it from my pay. And I loved wood, so there was a lot of weeks I didn't have a whole lot of money to take home, but lots of wood. Anyway, it's going to make a neat splash guard, um, and yeah, it's relatively old, like me. Anyway, I'm going to mount this, and uh, then I'm going to light my first fire. Uh, trammel may have to be made a bit bigger actually um, so a friend of my good friend of mine Bob Miller he uh, he made me this little horn thing here and uh, not only that but he charged the thing with uh, fresh char cloth and some chaga for fire starting so I'm gonna leave uh, Bob's fine gift there as a place of honor up there on my mantle so first fire pretty exciting we hope <laughs> 